ever since I've had this microphone, I just like increasing the gain and going, Well, hi there! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my jeez, I'm such a kid. Let's tidy up. This is, this is, this is truly the content that people want. It's, they don't actually want book reviews, they just want me to clean up. Well, my, they clean my act up together. Good evening, coffee supporters! God, that took a while to get there. I hope you were doing well. I'm, I'm doing fine. And you might have noticed recently, especially within this year, a, a corner of the world that I've been interested in is the Balkans. And one name, one author, has come up time and time again from my lovely Slavic watcher. So first of all, f thank you for all the recommendations. I mean, I think Gracia's the only one who can watch this, so yeah. Thank you very much. And the author in question is Ivo Andrich. And this book that is not very well known in the English language. If you do know Andrich, and I imagine most people don't, the book that you would be aware of is The Bridge Over the Drina, which I will be reviewing, I'll be putting that on the normal channel. Yeah, you can go there. The question that you might be asking, and definitely one that I've been asking, is, well, if this is the most well-read, if this is the most well-known, why on, why on earth did you read this chonker of a beast of the Bosnian Chronicle? So, this forms the first part of his Bosnian trilogy, of which is like a loose trilogy, kind of like Farrell's Empire. You don't have to read them in any particular order. The second one in this trilogy is The Bridge Over the Drina, and the third one is The Woman from Sarajevo, of, of which I can't find a copy at all. Obviously, what ties these books together is the fact that they're based around Bosnia, but also I can't imagine any author doing this. All three books were published in the same year, 1945 in Serbo-Croatian. So, there's a peculiar case about Andrich, the Nobel laureate who won in 1961. And that's because he's, um, is he Bosnian? Is he, is he Serbian? Is, is he Croatian? Uh, he was in Yugoslavia, mm, that doesn't... Mm, mm. Problem that people have is that everyone wants to claim him, and because the Balkans are this ever-changing geographical landscape, the, this argument of who... who... like, whose is he? Still today there doesn't seem to be a general consensus. Uh, what do the books say, actually? This book refuses to define him. Um, they call it Balkan, and this one, this one, uh, says he, <laughs> uh, Yugoslavian, Bosnian, Croat. Andrich, everyone. Well, I just imagine the fights in the comments over that, but truly, I can see why people would want to fight and claim Andrich as their own, because he's bloody good. To let you know, this is the first book I've read by Andrich, and I haven't even touched this yet, and this is his most well-known, so I'm basing it only off this one book, but he's pretty good. This is a historical novel, looking at the early 19th century, 1807 to the mid-1810s, based in a town of Travnik, which is where Andrich was born. In Serbo-Croatian, this is actually called the Travnik Chronicles, which I do feel would be a better name because you don't move outside of Travnik at all. You don't really have a sense of how big Bosnia is. You just get a sense of how bizarre the town of Travnik is. Why is Travnik so bizarre? Let's talk about the Occident and the Orient. I'm particularly in using those words because I think East and West won't give you a flavour of what is going on within this novel. Bosnia during this time is held under the rule of the Ottomans, which is Turkey, if you didn't know. If you look at the geographical situation of Turkey, it sits between Asia and Europe, and Travnik is at the epicentre of all of this. And it has an almost just like this ambiguous nature, and it, it doesn't feel as though any outsider at all would understand the ongoings, the structures, and the functionings of a town such as Travnik. Well, lucky for you people, we're going to bring loads of outsiders into Travnik. So we have, I'd say the main character in this, the French consul Deville. Andrich describes Deville coming in and just being 
confused about what is going on. He has a mission to obtain and he's there to obtain it. There comes in the vizier, which is the Turkish spokesperson, along with the Austrian consul as well, who has a mission which is very similar to Deville's, but it's different because it's a different empire. And then you have the locals and, and the friars and, and the Muslims and the Christians. Um, gypsies play a big part in all of this. They have they say of what they think the mission should or should be. And then you just have just a mess of people. Andrich, who is Bosnian, doesn't paint the Bosnians in a great light. He views them as outcasts and barbarians. There's even a scene in this where they start throwing um, dead body parts at the consuls. There is, there's so much going on here that doesn't paint the Bosnians in the best light. However, what the Bosnians have is within their ambiguity, within their reluctance to progress like the modern world, the refusal to be enlightened, the, the refusal of ev anything from the Occident and the Orient, they've somehow managed this, not a utopia, but a society where religion and the state and the governing bodies all somehow work. This is clearly juxtaposed by the position of Deville. 1907, we're in the Napoleonic War. So France has killed off their head of state. They've killed off their head of religion. And Napoleon's rule in his empire is a secular one at best. Deville, after spending years within Travnik, begins to lose sight of what his mission here. He even questions, why, why was he sent here in the first place? Like, what, what is he meant to do? He, he's lost all scope because nothing seems to fit within this small town. He has no governance and realizes that his rivals are actually his friends. So much so he will sleep with the Austrian consul's wife. Just because. Ah, oh, Deville. Um, I wouldn't say the Bosnian Chronicle gives you an insight into Bosnia. And I don't know if that's what Andrich's plan was. And there's two reasons for that. The first one is, the f yeah, I don't know anything about early 19th century Napoleonic Bosnia. This is a bit of a trial by Travnik fire. The only, um, like, description I can give is, imagine reading Wolf Hall, but not knowing anything really about England, or who the Tudors are, and, and why people are there. It was a bit like that. This was hard going, not in regards to how it's written, which is beautiful, not in regards to its structure, which is perfectly set out. If you don't know the history and you don't know why people are there, there's a bit of a onus from Andrich that says you, you should know what's going on here. Secondly, and probably the most important if you want to go into this, is that this is like epitome realist novel, which is you take a microcosm, you put loads of people within that microcosm, you then explode it out into the universal and showcase that, well, these people are everywhere and their own shortcomings and their flaws are set up by the traits that they have, by what they wish to obtain. And everyone really gets their just desserts throughout the Bosnian Chronicle. I will say I'm poorly describing this book because, because so much happens and it takes a while, similar to Wolf Hall, it took a while to understand what are the objectives of these people. And it's not just Deville you have to worry about. Well, what's his interactions with the Vizier got to do with the Austrians? And what happens when the Austrians are speaking to the Christians and with the Christians, well, but the Catholics and the Protestants and all that is set up within Travnik that just takes you as a reader a, a you have to take some leaps of faith in this in your own understanding I I I <laughs> I, I voice noted um <laughs> So my Slavic viewers being like, do you know anything about this book? Uh, that's the downfall of the book by the Bosnian Chronicle, but you can't 
criticise it because it's based on historical documents. All these things did happen and Andrich is weaving a story with it. So it, it's kind of down to you if you're willing to put the effort into trying to get through this book. Um, it, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It, it's beautifully it's beautifully translated. Who are the translators? Translator is Celia Hawksworth in collaboration with Bogdan Rakic. Um, now, one thing that's interested to say with Bosnian Chronicle, which I kind of alluded to at the beginning, which is that this isn't read as much in English. And that's because it took half a century. So from 1945, we only had the first English translation in 1995. I don't know when the first translation of Bridge Over the Dreamer was, but it's definitely been earlier and there's been more readership to it. All I know about Bridge Over the Dreamer is that where this deals with the real, this deals with the fictional, a fictional viewing of what has happened over the Drina River. Would you believe it? There's also a bridge. Wow, I told you, readers are so smart. If you're willing to put the effort in and you don't mind slogging through a book to some degree, we read Bodge together. This is, pfft, oh, it's as easy peasy lemon squeezy in comparison. Give it a go. Additionally, one of the reasons that I did pick this up is that there was a correlation between this and this Serbian uh, book, uh, Mesha Selimovic's Death and the Dervish, which uh, someone on Instagram, uh, Milana, uh, she's Serbian, had recommended. Like, this is like a go-to for Serbian, like, classic literature. Oh, it's translated by Bogdan Rakic. He's the guy who collaborated with it. <laughs> I mean, if this is a Bogdan Rakic, look at this. I'm going to do a hat trick. <gasps> Love it, F. Edwards. Let the side down. This will go on the main channel as well, because I'd like Milana to... Uh, see what I thought about it. Uh, she's one of the people I sent very frantic messages to about uh, Bosnian Chronicle. But give it a go. Have you heard of Evo Andrich? If you got any other like Eastern European classic books, let me know down below and I'll see you very shortly. I'm, I mean, I'm always in the Discord. You know that because you're probably there. You have a good day now.